So what are the trends in China? So what's happening in the Chinese market? So first of all, um, mobile is such a big deal here that um, if your strategy is to create web presence and target the desktop consumers first, and once you finish with that, then start a mobile or m-commerce think again. In fact, in many cases, people are bypassing the desktop and going straight to, to mobile, straight to m-commerce. So 400% growth year on year, that's much bigger than anything we have out there. So that's one. Secondly, when we first came here four years ago, no one was interested in B2C or e-commerce or multi-channel. The reason for that is Alibaba. Everyone was basically content. They're selling through Alibaba or Jindong and Dan Dan and Pei Pei and they don't need. The comment was, why do we need our own website? We're selling happily or, you know, Alibaba. This has changed. Brands today, retailers today understand they need their own channel. They need to connect with consumers directly. Alibaba is great, but Alibaba is one channel. But that one channel doesn't allow you to have that kind of um, picture um, that I illustrated to demonstrate how all your channels are integrated. You can only achieve that with your own presence, with your own channel. In addition, it's difficult to have your own uh, loyalty uh, scheme. So it's difficult to build that kind of intimacy with, with consumers. But today, this has changed. Of course, to compensate for the potential loss of revenue, Alibaba is looking overseas and signing agreement with various governments to promote trading uh, to China across them. Same thing happening with Jingdong. The other thing happening, which is really exciting, if you were to ask me a couple of years ago, how long will it take China to get into multi-channel, I would have said it will probably take five, six years, given where China was at that time. The exciting thing, China, Chinese market is using innovations such as WeChat to cross the boundaries between physical and digital. So China actually is creating, on, uh, creating O2O and multi-channel much faster than expected because they use innovation, which is different to the model used in, the, in, in say, in Europe and the UK, where you have mature retail. So that's exciting. Social commerce, obviously, is much more exciting. So we can learn a lot from the Chinese market in terms of how to use um, social commerce. The equivalent of WeChat for, in a European market doesn't have the same uh, capabilities, transactions, commercial capabilities that WeChat has. We then have high expectations. Chinese consumers are getting very, very sophisticated. You know, lo lots of expectations in terms of um, um, what they expect from you as a retailer. The changing demographics, yes, China is not uh, a country. China is more like European Union. You have all the countries in one. And, um, and, uh, and obviously, every country changes over time, except in China, the two differences. One, that change is happening at a fa you know, much faster pace. And secondly, you have the change happening in time and regions, geography. So. Chinese trading north and south, east and west, totally different. Finally, um, Chinese consumers are changing. They're not, no longer just about price-driven. There will always be price-sensitive segment. That doesn't change. But in addition to that, we started to see a rise of new segments. Cash-rich, time-poor. People who don't want to display wealth, but you know, they are more subtle about it, which means they need to understand more about the brand heritage connecting to the brand. So these are the changes that we see happening in the Chinese market. So what are the challenges? The biggest challenge facing retailers in China is, is the first one, the, the B2B mentality. There's a very strong business to business mentality and not enough business to consumer. Many examples, I talked, I talked about the partner stores and concessions as one example. Um, other examples include um, uh, franchising, you know, and the, uh, the use of franchising to, to increase revenue significantly. Um, but you're not dealing with consumers directly. This B2B mentality has led to 
lack of trading skills. So the example of department stores, a merchandiser in department store isn't a merchandiser, say, in John Lewis or Selfridges or Harrods. They're more relationship managers than, than, uh, than merchandisers. So there is a problem in terms of lack of trading uh, skills. The other challenge here is there is um, um, an underestimation of the impact on the organization as you, as you go through this journey. And hence, you see a lot of um, technology driven. So many Chinese brands and, and retailers, when we engage with them, they really are focusing on technology and basically saying, what kind of technology do you have to help me? Uh, they want to bypass the organization uh, analysis and impact, and they just want to go about technology. And if there is one thing you know, to say here is, it's never about technology alone. It's about people, process, and technology. Technology on its own doesn't solve your branding problem, doesn't you know, get you to, to understand your consumers. It helps, but it's no substitute. Um, the other thing is um, e-business is business. We're not talking about some business on the side that uh, you, know, you hire some um, uh, cool teenagers to, to work on, on some websites. That's not e-business. E-business is for you uh, to understand the impact on the organization. And um, the view that to succeed in online you must drop price is a myth. Obviously, you need to have a driver to, you know, it's a channel, it's a store. Just like you open any store, any physical store, you need to think about how to attract consumers. If you open a store and you don't go about customer insight, understand your brand values, communicate, you know, brand values consistently, understand customer experience. If you, if you don't do any of that, then you drop the price. But that's your choice. And it doesn't have to be like that. And, and the change that I just talked about, how the consumers are changing in China, is an illustration that is no longer about the price. It's about much more than that. It's about you, the brand, it's about consumers, and it's about the customer experience. Finally, we talked about China is complex, and, and it is. The uh, decentralized approach in China which means if you have multiple stores, each store is a commercial entity, lead to um, operational difficulties such as customer service. There is a culture of decentralized customer service. Customer service exists in store and they don't share uh, feedback and, and um, amalgamate information uh, you know, to, uh, to, to the head office. So these are the trends and challenges. In terms of opportunities, the opportunities of multi-channel um, and I gave some examples and apologies, the old um, British examples, UK examples, but the UK is the, um, is the largest market in the world, even, e e even bigger than the US in terms of contribution of um, multi-channel to GDP. And the opportunities here um, illustrated by the following. First of all, because you know, many people think multi-channel is only about creating another revenue stream. It's far bigger than that. The first advantage you have here is differentiation. Anyone going to London strongly recommend you go to Regent Street and have a look at the flagship store of Burberry to understand how much Burberry have moved in the last 10 years using multi-channel. And that change has been seen in expanding their customer base to include younger segment at the same time to use technology and multi-channel to make it really exciting customer experience. You pick a dress, you go to the changing room, the mirrors change to screens, playing video, catwalk, to show you a model wearing the dress that you, you, know, you have in your hand. Very soon with the virtual reality, you will see your face rather than the model. But for me, real advancement will be if that happens and you lose 10 kilos at the same time, then that would be progress. So that's differentiation from um, you know, that Examples like Burberry are leading. Omnichannel, John Lewis is um, one of the most successful department stores in the UK. Never knowingly, under, uh, never knowingly undersold. Whatever you buy from John Lewis, if you find it somewhere else, they would uh, reduce the price. The customer service is impeccable. The whole organization, uh, they don't work like employees, they work like partners. And uh, they're using Omnichannel um, very successfully click and collect 
um, is, is one of the examples in terms of how you can trade with, with uh, John Lewis in a, in a physical, digital, or combination of the two. Tesco um, is, is another great example in terms of propagation. Tesco expanded the offering into 10 countries. Tesco expanded from food into GM, general merchandise. Tesco expanded from um, you know, uh, their target segment back in 96 to multiple segments. New territory, so marketplace, new business models. As example of propagation. Optimization, Marks and Spencer, another client of ours, is removing the boundaries between e-commerce and the store. So the whole organization operates as one. Uh, streamlining and, and uh, improving existing uh, processes. FNF is, um, is a fashion brand. So if you go to Burberry, Regent Street, take a short drive to Kensington and look at FNF. FNF is a Tesco brand, but when you see it, it doesn't, doesn't give you an impression that this is a fashion brand owned by a supermarket. Again, they're using multi-channel to elevate the brand. So these are examples of how to use multi-channel. In China, the two big examples for me are Suning and Yintime. Suning have invested a huge amount of money to reinvent themselves moving from their existing target segment into wider target segment, attracting women shoppers, selling beauty and cosmetic products, enforcing one price strategy across all channels, and, and lots of um, you know, um, uh, exciting changes. Um, it has been a struggle, but you know, I think gradually they will get there. End Time is another great example in China of a department store that is engaging with consumers and trying to create that kind of omni-channel. So, you know, there are a number of retailers in China embarking on, um, on multi-channel with the understanding that it's much bigger than just online or e-commerce. Ultimately, this is the vision that we're trying to create, a vision whereby you are trading across all channels, store, digital, mobile, apps, social, etc. Providing rich offering and consistent service to consumers, hence the term omnichannel. Achieving alignment across people, process and technology. Uh, having the agility to change business models if you need to, react to, to changing uh, market trends, understand how to expand your segmentation. Uh, your range, etc. As a consumer, I can research on one channel, buy from a second channel, have the product delivered from a third channel, and if I'm unhappy, return to a fourth channel, and then share my story on a fifth channel. So I'm using five channels within one experience. For that to happen, you need to have sharing in customer insight, in price and promotion strategies, in range proposition. You can't buy from one channel, return to the other, just to be told we know nothing about this product. So this is, this is the world today. Not just simply have a website and trade, but achieve this as a business, as an organization. And you can't achieve this by machines. This is people's business. And pe people need vision. So it starts from leadership with the vision in order to achieve this. This might be a bit futuristic, but not really. So in the UK, we are already talking beyond multi-channel. So these are channels. That's, this is multi-channel. But we're also talking about multi-business model. Multi-business models from B to C, to marketplace, to shared platform, to affiliates, to white label, you have the ability to create business models in, in an amazing way, you know, that you never ever had that kind of um, advantage. In addition, of course, to internationalization, lots of Chinese brands, retailers, when they go overseas, they go for branding. But it doesn't have to be like that, you know, you can also have commercial objectives. And finally, multiplicity in terms of segmentation, both static segmentation lifestyle and dynamic segmentation based on your behavior with the channel at the time. 
So this is what's happening today. This is not, um, as I said, hype or marketing. This is reality. So gone the days when we only you know, depend on, on e-commerce and multi-channel. This slide illustrates the point I was making. Traditionally, when you used to open a store, there was one driver. You know, you either creating a store based on the choice or range, or based on the price, or based on the experience, convenience, based on location, or based on the, you know, the theater, uh, the look and feel. One driver. You can only open a store based on one of these. Today, you can have, have, have it all. So the illustration here is these are the six business models I mentioned. And you, as you can see, you can achieve all these drivers. This is new. This is um, completely revolutionary in terms of how you, you think about business and how important this business is e-business here.